In this video, I'll demo the data acquisition motor control system where I'll be controlling a servo motor with a, an, a PWM signal coming from my DAC device. So for my system, I've chosen the USB 6211 hardware option and I have just a simple DC servo motor and attached to the shaft is this knob so we can see when it moves. And I've connected it directly to a counter output uh, with a diode here. One thing I want to mention uh, and stress before we get started, most if not all motor control applications will require some kind of current amplifier or current driver. Um, the data acquisition cards aren't meant to supply the current required by the motor and in most cases you'll see the motor attached to some uh, current uh, circuitry and then uh, connected to the DAC device. The reason I can get away with it here is because I've got no load on my motor and when it's not loaded it really doesn't pull too much current and the DAC device can actually supply uh, the small amount of current needed when there's no load on it. So let's go ahead and get into programming our application. So for this there's actually an example that installs with your DACMX driver. So I'm just going to open up that example and modify it a little bit. So when you open LabVIEW you will want to go to find examples and then this example is in hardware input and output, DACMX, generating digital pulses, and the one that we want to use is generate digital pulse train in the continuous BI. So I'm actually going to get rid of some of these front panel controls because we're going to configure that a different way. And I'm going to right click and put down a knob. So this knob is going to be how we changed the duty cycle of our system. So we'll just change this to duty cycle and we'll change the scale from 0 to 1. So let's look at the block diagram here. Get rid of some broken wires. So what's going on here is we're saying output a pulse on this particular counter, so the counter we've chosen is device 1 counter 0 which corresponds to this device and this counter. So now we're going to modify it a little bit. I'm going to expand this so I have room to put a property node in. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to DACMX, channel node, place that down, and we'll just wire it up to our channel. And there's two properties that I actually want to access and control. The first one is in counter output, pulse, frequency, and then frequency. And the next one is in counter output, pulse, frequency, and then duty cycle. So now we want to wire up our control to the duty cycle. And then we're going to make a constant for the frequency output. And I know that my motor runs real well at 40 hertz. And that's about it. So to run through the code real quick, we're pointing to a counter and we're saying output a pulse train, make it a continuous pulse train, and now start that pulse. And then we're in this loop where we can programmatically define we want 40 hertz and then we can change the duty cycle from our front panel. And then when we're done we'll stop the task. So now we're ready to run it. So I'll hit the run button and if I crank up my duty cycle 
you should see the motor itself responds. So it's at about 80%, it's at about 50, and this is full on.